Two years ago, I realized that you can take the seeds from fruits that you love and grow your own fruit. So I started to grow fruit trees from store-bought fruits, hundreds of them. And when I tried it with this lemon, something magical happened that I just have to tell you all. And along the way, I'm going to teach you how to grow these things successfully, so bu buckle up. Because you're about to hop on a wild ride, a journey of achievement, and a quest for greatness. So it all started 24 months ago on this exact day. I decided to take this lemon, remove the seeds, place them in soil, and, and wait. I waited two years. I watched this thing like a hawk. Initially, four months had passed. It was growing real nice. So much so that it became time for me to transplant these little seedlings into their new home. You know, like when you move out of mom and dad's house and free up the nest so they can jiggy jaggy. Well, my lemon plant was jiggy jaggying, all right. And as more time passed, I low key got a lemon obsession. And since it was summertime, I realized that you can actually dye your hair naturally with lemons. And I wanted to try it. So as we waited for these lemons to grow, I wanted to try it. Actually, learned this way back when at summer camp as a child. And I've been doing it every summer since. But just be careful because lemons are really acidic, so too much sun can burn your scalp. You can dilute it with water to help. But it's very easy. You basically just have to cut the lemon, squeeze out the juice, get a steak brush, and brush the lemon juice into your hair. That's the way that I did it. And as you can see, a few weeks passed and the results were astonishing. It really worked and it looked so darn cute. I had a lineup of men at my doorstep. Anywho. By this point, another month had passed by and it had been around five months since we planted our original lemon seeds. And if you know anything about this channel, we grow other plants too. This summer, we're actually on the prowl to build the largest apartment garden in the world. And that video is dropping next week, so stay tuned, but <laughs> I took some of the other plants that I was growing, some basil, some mint, sage, lemon balm, and I decided to experiment a little bit. Not in any way, shape, or form for alcoholic purposes. Okay, maybe yes. But this is also perfect for a nice, refreshing summer drink if you don't drink alcohol. Just add your leaves to an ice cube tray, freeze overnight, and in the morning, just add the cubes to some water or some lemonade. Or you can be fun and spontaneous. And get a little buzz from some good juice. Some good soup. And with me being in the spirit of lemons and waiting for this plant to grow, there are always highs and lows. And during this time, it was actually in the brinks of COVID. Remember, two years ago, and everyone was getting sick around me. It's also just that time of year when winter turns to spring which turns to summer and everyone gets what Canada calls colds. Not sure if anyone else experiences that or calls it that in your country but let me know because I'm actually very curious. But anywho, in the spirit of our lemon plant and COVID I made up a little concoction that helped me and a lot of my family and friends get better a lot faster during this transition. Some lemon, ginger, honey, added boiling water to the cup and it was the absolute perfect remedy to cure my cold and to give me the patience I needed to see if we were actually about to grow some real lemons. So of course I kept checking on our plant. Don't you think this plant lady forgot about that because at this point about seven months had passed since we planted our original lemon plant and that plant was looking absolutely ravishing but along the way i started learning a lot about lemons and their relatives too one of my favorite things i learned along the way was that about four thousand years ago a rare fruit appeared and when you eat it it tastes like a lemon and a grapefruit mixed together they're often confused with grapefruits and they're the world's largest citrus fruit it can weigh up to four kilograms the same as a newborn baby and in some cultures this fruit Fruit is even seen as good luck. Sometimes they're given as gifts on the Lunar New Year, but it is a mainstream fruit native to Southeast Asia and Malaysia, and I loved getting my hands on this fruit, the pomelo. Because it's actually also very tasty with tahini, but also by itself. But you know me, I grow all the plants. So I figured, what? what's one more? It's like when you have more than five kids, it's like, okay, let's just keep popping them out. Anyway. I was like, let's try growing pomelo, and it worked really well. A lot faster than our lemon plant was growing too. Now they're just chilling. They're gonna grow. But I was still religiously checking our lemon plant and if you know anything about me i'm not always happy with slow growth i try many other ways of growing something to see which not only yields the best results but yeah basically whatever works i remembered that i had a grow box and i thought well what if i plant lemon seeds in this box will the plant have a chance at growing faster or stronger faster is key here well you know that i tried it and i would never make you wait for results so this is basically what happened to the grow box lemon plant i took some seeds placed them in my grow box and i waited and i also wanted to just germinate more so i could give some plants to some friends and family so I placed a few on a damn piece of paper towel, and yes, I know I shouldn't have used a napkin with so much dye on it. Don't come at me. It had flowers on it, okay? But I'm sorry to be a little crazy, but I also placed a few in soil just to have fun with it and be a crazy lemon plant lady. I'm also, though, just a really curious person, and I love seeing different ways that I can do things and the end results of them because then it just helps me not only be constantly learning, but 
expanding my creative mind. I want to explore and try new things that are cool, and I want to try things that no one else really ever thinks to do. Anywho, I guess it is safe to say that I got a lemon obsession. Because after the grow box and the germination shenanigans, all while we were waiting for our original plant to grow, which was still in fact thriving, I took a trip to the grocery store, and I saw some lemongrass, and it still looked like it had the roots intact in some shape or form. And I wanted to see if I could spread it at home and then grow more lemongrass because it smells so good. And it worked. Well, at first I totally failed because I cut all the roots off, not realizing that I would need them to grow, but I was so determined for it to work, so I went back to the store, got a bigger piece that looked more growable, kept the roots on it. That one, well, it ended up growing and towering, growing so high. In Toronto, we call it the tallest building, the CN Tower. Well, this thing was mighty close. Well, but you know what that means, a slippery slope on the way down. And I had to plant this thing in soil and fast because it was going to die soon. I did exactly that, and it began to thrive outside, and my, my garden began to look like a lemon lover's heaven. I even got my favorite plant. Or what eventually ended up becoming my favorite plant because one sensitive touch to the leaves, your fingers smell like absolute dreams on the top of a cloud with cotton candy and Mike and I explore. You know what I mean. And if you don't, you better go get a lemon balm plant and tell me it doesn't become your favorite plant too. But we grew that successfully and as I was getting to repot that plant, I realized, darn, <laughs> our garden is growing. The one original lemon plant that we started out with now turned into pomelo, grow box lemons, lemongrass, lemon balm, paper towel lemons. I even planted in and out seeds from the restaurant because I'm from Canada and I wanted to see if I grow in and out lemon plant, okay? That, that was very fun and it did seem to work a little bit. But anyway. I knew that I was gonna need to fertilize this entire family of lemons. And you know me, I don't like chemicals or anything that isn't natural. And even though I eat meat, it's whatever. I might become a vegetarian soon once I have my own chickens that I raise because I can never hurt a baby animal. Anywho. I, I didn't want to use store-bought fertilizer. Moral of the story. So I grabbed two eggshells, crushed them up, poured some vinegar over top to cover those shells, and it began to bubble and create a thicker layer over top, which actually in turn became calcium. After about an hour of letting that sit, my solution stopped bubbling, so I took a little spoon, scooped that top layer off, and my friend, I made a water-soluble calcium eggshell fertilizer for my plants. You basically just dilute that spoonful of calcium into about a liter of water, water your plants, and it'll become your favorite natural fertilizer. It's not great for every plant, but just make sure your plant likes calcium. And I figured, well, if we're in the spirit of lemons, and vinegar is acidic like lemons, would the acidity from the lemons work in replacing the vinegar and make a similar fertilizer? Well, I tried it, and the answer to that is, in fact, no. But it was cool to see the lemon still bubbling up with the eggshells and I'm still thinking about other ways that I can use this little concoction. And I know, I know, I got a bit distracted along the way from all these different ways that I wanted to use and grow lemons. So it's valid that you're probably wondering, well what in the heck can happen to your original lemon plant? Did you grow real lemons, crazy plant lady? Well, by this point about a year and a half passed by and the lemon was looking amazing. But me being me, I ended up going on vacation for a couple months and I came home to my lemon plant dead. D-E-A-D. R-I-P. And any normal person would definitely just throw this out, but me being me, I didn't throw it out. I repotted it, and I took it out to look at the actual roots, because if you have a dying plant at home, it's likely actually not in fact dead. You just have to take the plant out, look at the roots, and to make sure it's still alive, if your roots are white or clear or transparent or they have nice slippery movement, they're good to grow. If they're completely black and bristle so much so that they break very easily in your hands, then sure, it's probably a goner. I would probably not throw it out so I could try and see if I could save it, but seriously. Don't throw your plants out when just the leaves fall off the stems because after some love and some bedtime stories, this lemon plant persevered and actually began to grow back and being a successful plant mother was feeling better than any drug. So after we revived it, a whole nother six months passed. The growth has been over the years a lot slower than I had initially anticipated. I definitely thought we would get lemons by now, but it also takes the right environment and conditions and care. So if we lived in a different zone, it would probably grow faster. I'm pretty confident we're going to begin to see mini lemons grow either at the end of the summer or by next summer. My goal is to actually search for properties this year. I'm aggressively. Until I find something that I love by the water, where I can use that piece of land to build the greenhouse of my dreams, to build the farm of my dreams, get a group of chickens to call my own. Listen, I told you that this would be a journey and a half, and it was, was it not? Thank you so much for following along this wild ride and learning about lemons, their relatives, how to grow them, how to use them in different ways. Like, honestly, ah. You guys keep me young. So until next time, where we take exotic fruits and try to grow them into full-blown houseplants that fruit in Canada. I'll see you next week.